Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another inks comparison video, and this is my, my favourite grey inks comparison number one. So I think with that, let's go and swallow up some of these inks. So I get a lot of questions on how I do these ink videos. So I decided I would add this to the front of each of the ink videos. I put links in the descriptions, but I know some of you watch this on TVs or mobile devices, so you don't get to see this. So first off, the paper is the number one question I get asked. What paper do I use for these ink comparison videos? So this is the original Tomoe River. This is 52 GSM and it is the white, not the cream, the white. Where possible, I try to go for the white because the cream can actually change the color of the ink just a little bit. So this is Tomoe River 52 GSM in the white. Um, a lot of people get confused as well because I have what looks to be a grid on this page and it's actually an Oxford Optic pad. These are the pads that I actually use when I'm writing my uh, writing samples for pen reviews or in my currently ink. So they have these little squares up here. Uh, I just use that because it's a good guide for me when I put this very thin sheet of Tomoe River over. I can actually see squares, so it helps me write a little bit sort of straight uh, on the page. Not always, but sometimes it does. The the other thing that I also have is a I have a bottle of water, plain water, and uh, I dip my nib in here. So for consistency, I use the same fountain pen or... <laughs> I guess it's not a fountain pen. It's using a fountain pen nib though. This is a 3D printed pen from William Shakur in the UK. So he prints this uh, material 3D and it has a number eight size Bok nib, which I can unscrew and you can see there. So it is just a dip pen holder for a number eight size Bok nib and the idea is I want to have consistency with the writing sample so I use this I dip it in the ink uh, I write and then I will dip it in here and I will rinse the nib off several times and I will dry it and then at that point uh, I will then go on to do the next ink swatch and the next writing sample. So there you have it that's uh, how I do my ink swatches so I just wanted to show you uh, that here. Now on to the ink comparison video. So as you probably know by now, one of my main favourites here is Diamine Earl Grey. I think it is a perfect grey ink. So I think let's do an ink swatch first. So let's do an ink swatch here. And this is a, a very dark grey. And it's one that just I gravitate towards a lot. I just prefer the darker greys. But you can see here, it starts to get a little bit more of a lighter colour. We'll do a second pass over the top half. And that will just show the difference between a wet and a broad and a dry and a narrow writing nib. So this is Diamine. And it is Earl gray which is a reddit exclusive that diamine made for the reddit fountain pen community the next thing which has actually become one of my favorite grays is venvustus and it's fumo di londra so we'll do another ink swatch here and you'll see it's not as dark as diamine earl gray but I find it has a little bit of a bluish green tinge to it. We'll do a second pass over the top half, just show the difference between a wet and a broad and a dry and a narrow writing nib. So this is a Venvustus. And it is Fumo di Londra. But that is starting to become one of my favourite grey inks. 
it just it's like Diamond Earl Grey, but not quite as dark. One of my newer grey inks I'm starting to like a lot is Winter London Grey. So we'll do another ink swatch here. And I do find that this is a little bit on the dry side, so let's just try and put a bit more ink down there on that swatch. Now, it is, I'd say, a little bit more on the green tinge. We'll do a second pass over the top half, just to show the difference between a wet and a broad, and a dry and a narrow writing nib. So this is Vinter, and it's London grey which again is an interesting grey ink definitely looks more on the greener side of grey i would say now one of my all-time favorites was still is but uh it has been superseded by diamond old grey is pilot Oroshizuku kiri sami so we'll do another ink swatch here and Initially, this looks quite a wet ink. Uh, it's You can see as it's going onto the page there, it is quite wet and dark, but it then starts to lighten up a lot. We'll do a second pass over the top half, just to show the difference between a wet and a broad, and a dry and a narrow writing nib. So this is Pilot Iroshizuku. And it is Kiri Sami. Now, one thing I will mention is that this ink is very waterproof. Uh, if it gets wet once the ink has dried, you will still, you'll see a little bit of the ink disappear, but you will still have the core undertone, uh, sort of dark grey black of the ink. So it's actually quite a good ink to use on, say, envelopes if you're writing letters because if it were to get wet then you're still going to be able to read the ink it's not quite a permanent ink but it's not far from it and then the last ink here is mont blanc and it's oyster gray so we'll do an ink swatch and this used to be uh one of my favorite uh it still is a favorite gray ink but I typically use it less. I have gravitated more towards Diamine Earl Grey. We'll do a second pass over the top half just to show the difference between a wet and a broad or a dry and a narrow writing nib. So this is Mont Blanc. Oyster Grey. And I believe Oyster Grey has been discontinued. Uh, same goes for Pilot Roshizuku, Kiri Sami. I think let's now take a look at these inks now that they have dried. So the first ink here is Diamine Earl Grey. And as I've mentioned, this really is my favourite go-to grey ink. I'm not typically a fan of light grey or graphite grey coloured inks. Uh, I'd like something when I'm going to write in, in the writing sample for it to be a mid to dark grey so this is the the my ultimate favorite gray ink so can you see the difference between a wet and a dry writing nib you definitely can can you see any shading going on there is definitely shading going on in the pulled area is there any sheening going on though now i would say maybe a little bit here along the top here but I typically don't normally see Diamine Earl Grey uh, sheening. So uh, I would say it's probably trying to sheen, but just not quite being able to do so. But this is my favourite go-to ink of all greys, and it is one that I will constantly ink up all the time. The next favourite, I would say, is Venvustus Fumo di Londra. And... I have to say, I'm actually liking this a lot. And it has also almost become equal to Diamine Earl Grey in terms of the ink that I like writing with. If you compare the, the writing comparison, you'll see that Van Vistus Fumo di Londra is slightly lighter 
maybe a little bit more of a blue tinge to the grey. Can you see a difference between a wet and a dry writing nib? You definitely can. Can you see shading? You can. Not a huge amount, but you can see it in that, that pooled area there. Can you see any sheen? Again, I would say no. It, it's not uh, really designed to be a sheening ink. Uh, but it is, a night for me, a nice grey ink. And it's a, an ink that, that I have been enjoying a lot recently. The next ink here is a Vinter London Grey. And I thought that this would be more of a bluish grey. Um, but it has, as you can see here on camera, turned out more to be a greenish grey. Now, can you see the difference between a wet and a dry writing nib? You definitely can. Uh, can you see any shading? There's a huge amount of shading going on here in that pooled area. Uh, can you see any sheening? And I would say yes, you can. Certainly around the, the minute edges here, where it is the darkest, it is trying to sheen there. Uh, it is a beautiful grey ink, uh, but I don't normally go for green tinge of grey. I'm more of a blue grey than, than anything, or a black grey. But it is an interesting grey ink. I'd say it's a little bit more looking towards green, I would say, when you look at the writing sample there, because that in itself is actually, I'd almost say green. Uh, but again, it's an interesting grey ink, and it's one that I've been getting used to quite a bit lately. Now, one of my all-time favourites was Pilot Roshizuku Kirisami. But I found that I didn't like it as much and I wanted a more bluish grey. And, and that's when I stumbled across, uh, across Diamine Earl Grey and fell in love with it. Uh, Pilot Roshizuku Kirisami is a nice grey. It's more, I would say, of a, a brown grey um rather than maybe a slate gray can you see the difference between a wet and a broad or a dry or a narrow writing nib you definitely can here uh there is also shading going on in that pooled area and then if i try to show you is it sheening um i'd say it's trying to certainly around the edges here uh but again it's not really an ink that's designed to sheen but as I said, this is quite a waterproof ink. So you can write on envelopes with this. And even if you got the envelope quite wet and, and rub the envelope, you'll still, some of the ink will disappear, but you will still see the undertones of the writing. So it's quite, it's, it's not a waterproof ink, not a permanent ink, but it doesn't do bad. So if you wanted to protect your you're writing on envelopes or or even on uh, on pages in a notebook that you fear might get wet at some point, then it is actually a good semi-waterproof ink to be able to use. Now, the last ink is Mont Blanc Oyster Grey. And this, again, also used to be one of my favourite inks, and I used to ink it up a lot. But again, I've just gone towards a little bit more towards Diamine Earl Grey more recently in the, in the last year or two. Again, it's a little bit more like Pilot of Washizuku Kirisami. It's, I'd say, a little bit more of a brownish, blackish grey. Uh, can you see the difference between a wet and a broad and a dry and a narrow writing nib? Yes, you can. Uh, can you see some shading going on? There's a little bit of shading, but not a huge amount, and you're not going to really see it in the writing sample either. Uh, but can you see any sheen? And yes, you can. This is a nice sheening ink. So all of this bit here and along here is all trying to sheen. It's not a massive amount of sheen, but it is sheen. So if you are looking for a grey sheening ink, then that certainly is uh, Mont Blanc Oyster Grey is one that I would recommend. Uh, now, I personally prefer a more bluish grey or slate grey colour, uh, sort of a mid to dark grey, rather than a very light grey ink. But uh, 
you might actually prefer lighter greys. But for me, I, I want a grey that I'm going to be able to see the writing on if I'm writing with it. So that's my favourite grey inks comparison number one video. If you like any of these inks, then do let me know in the comments below. Likewise, if you have any other inks that you'd like me to check out, then do let me know in the comments below. So that's my great favourite grey inks comparison number one video. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.